Right, uh, welcome guys to lecture number nine. This is going to be um, a very brief uh, little video because I'm going to be moving on to PowerPoint and I'm going to annotate a PowerPoint for you. So just uh, a minute or two introduction and then we switch over and uh, jump over to, to the PowerPoint. You'll remember that so long we've been talking about theme number two, which is Italian neorealism. Um, we did in lecture seven an introduction to it, just talking about some of the the key features of neorealism. You'll remember that that was uh, ideas like improvisation, uh, the use of, of children within the films, and the idea mostly, and this is the big thing to to take out of neorealism. Uh, the idea that the protagonist doesn't always have ultimate agency. So sometimes they are held uh, hostage by the social, economic, and political forces that surround them. They can't always overcome things like we see uh, in other forms of film, right? Specifically American film where the protagonist always overcomes whatever it is that is placed uh, in front of them. So uh, in lecture seven, we did the introduction. In lecture eight, we did through Pachafici, the Pachafici article, we did a deep kind of historical and cultural context for Italy. And we did also the Roberta and Wilson article very briefly, which pretty much recaps lecture seven, but it also brings one more thing into the equation, which is the idea of the other forces um, in Italy in the 1940s and 50s that also impacted on Italian culture and that competed with Italian neorealists for uh, social influence. So that was things like the Catholic Church, that was things like the Soviet Union, and that was things like uh, the cultural hegemony of the uh, United States. So this week, uh, as you'll see on the PowerPoint, we complexify things much further. We have kind of two things to do still. Um, we have two things to do still. Come here. We have two things to do still. We have two things to do still before. Before. Shh, Sabina. Daddy's working, okay. We have two things to do still. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah, two things to do still before we finish Italian Neorealism. The, the first, which we do today, is that Lecture 9 PowerPoint slides where we complexify Italian Neorealism much further. We go into some very difficult theory. We're going to talk about the post-structural thinker, Jules Deleuze, and his take on Italian Neorealism. And you can see that uh, he, yeah, he, he really thought highly of it. And he'll be talking about quite complex topics such as up signs, sun signs. Uh, drift and dislocation in Italian neorealism. We mentioned that a little bit in lecture eight. Um, and after that, so, so that's today's lecture. Then lecture 10, which is next time, we'll be reading together an article from the course reader. It's by Rachel Gabara, and that specifically deals with the export of Italian neorealism outside of its borders. So that's the export of Italian neorealism specifically to, to South America. Uh, and uh, more importantly for us, or more interesting for us, to to the uh, African continent, right? Uh, and we said already, I mentioned this to you last week, that it all starts in 1963 with a film by a Senegalese filmmaker called Usman Sinben, who then becomes this big figure for critical African cinema. So we talk about that next week. This week we kind of do pretty much Deleuze exclusively. How does Deleuze relate to Italian neorealism? So that's today, lecture nine. Next week, we talk about the export lecture, lecture 10. And lecture 11, we wrap things up and we do the uh, assignment workshop. Right, so we, we wrap things up, we do the assignment workshop in 11. And after that, there's only two lectures and it's on theme number three, film noir. So we're getting through it. It's also a little bit odd and strange, but uh, hopefully by now, this is the third lecture that you've seen digitally. 
but you're kind of getting into into the swing of things. All right, so let's get on to uh, the PowerPoint.